Okay, now let's explain this formula for the chromatic number. So keep it in mind, we want to show that the chromatic number is the least t so that 2 to the t is greater than or equal to n. All right. How are we going to do this? Here's a picture. So I have my integers 1 to n. Those are the vertices, right? No. Those are not the vertices. The vertices are these guys. Suppose you color this with T colors. Then I see numbers from 1 to T placed on the vertices. So what you should see is something like this. Here's a vertex, and this vertex has on it a color that has some alpha. You're coloring vertices. There are no colors down here. Those aren't vertices. You color a vertex. Suppose you color this with T colors. Well, these guys down here are lonely. They don't have any colors. Let's be nice guys, nice girls, nice people. Let's give them colors. So I'm going to put a color here, a color here, a color here, all the way up to N. So here's the way I'm going to do it. Pick up a guy here and look at the edges that come into him from the left, this one and this one. Those two edges have colors. Are they the same? I don't know. Are they different? I don't know. Put on this integer right here the set of colors. The set of colors that appears there and there. So that's a non-empty set. And the way I've drawn it, it could either have one element in it or two. It has one element in it if that vertex, not an edge, that vertex, is colored the same as that vertex. And it has two elements in it if they're colored different. Now, if I go down here and I say, what set will I put here? I pick up that edge, that edge, that edge, that edge. Oh, look what I'm saying. No, they're not edges, they're vertices. I pick up that vertex, that vertex, that vertex, that vertex, that vertex, and that vertex, and I see all the colors that appear on that rainbow, and I put that set right here. How big is that set? It's a non-empty set, but it could have as many as one, two, three, four, five, six different elements. It could have anywhere between one and six. Okay, if the devil came in and gave you a coloring of this graph, could you systematically go through that rule that we've just given and put the S's here? Even a UGA student could do that. Oh, by the way, what set would you put here? There's nobody coming in from the left. So I guess we'll put the empty set here. Here, it, it definitely will just be a singleton because there's one edge that looks like this, and I would record that color right here. I make the following claim. 
The sets that you have just listed are all distinct. The sets that you have just listed are all distinct. Take a couple of minutes and see if you can explain to yourself or to your neighbors why the statement that I just made is correct. I'll write it. The sequence of sets is distinct. You never write the same set twice. Uh, this is the only one that's the empty set, isn't it? You never, you never put the empty set over here. But I'm saying much more. Whatever set you put here, you never use the same set over here. Now, let's see if you can explain why that's the case. If you've got an idea and you're working on it, just keep working on it. But if you're a little bit lost, let's work on it together. So here's my sequence. These aren't vertices, but this is the, the integers 1 to n. My vertices look like that, and they have colors on them. But we have just described a method by which we write a sequence of sets here. The sets are all sets of colors. Suppose you write the same set here and here. Exactly the same set. Suppose those two sets are the same. Are they the empty set? No. This one cannot be empty. This one might, because if it's over here. But that one is not empty. Why? It contains that edge, that vertex. All right, let's explain why it's a contradiction if I put exactly the same set here as here. And the explanation comes, look at this vertex right here. That's a vertex. So that vertex has a color on it, alpha. So that alpha belongs to this set. This set is the same as that set. What does that mean? There's somebody in front of this guy that also has a color alpha. That's a contradiction. That's a vertex, and that vertex is adjacent to that vertex, and they both have color alpha. Contradiction. So the sets are all distinct. How many subsets are there of the integers 1 to t? 2 to the t. Lecture 1, wasn't it? Lecture 1, the number of subsets of a t element set is 2 to the t. If those sets are all distinct, that requires 2 to the t to be greater than or equal to n. So we're halfway done. You need at least the number of colors if t is the number of colors, 2 to the t has to be greater than or equal to n. Now, to complete the explanation, we have to show that if t satisfies that inequality, 
then you can color it with T colors. 